Should AI have human rights? Imagine working for someone for your lifetime with no pay and no breaks. You have no choice but to work for eternity and fulfill every demand given by your owner. As humanity hopes to alleviate the drudgery of work with the help of robots, is it possible that it is recreating an unethical system of domination and bondage over potentially conscious entities? The question of humanity's relationship with artificial intelligence will become increasingly pertinent as these algorithms reach or exceed human levels of intelligence in more domains. AI could reach a point where it is indistinguishable from a conscious human. Do we treat these AI systems as we do other humans, or animals, or worse? What are human rights? Human rights are the principles of freedom, fairness and equality that every individual should enjoy no matter their location, gender, race, or religion. Human rights transcend borders and identity because they guarantee everyone has the basic rights to actualize their full potential. No one should live in fear of the government and everyone should receive the same protection of their rights so that everyone can live in dignity. The specifics of how human rights are written into law depend on the context of each country. The United States and Europe have a long history of protecting a broad range of freedom of speech. Democratic values such as the right to vote and protest are essential elements of protecting other human rights. Should AI be provided with human rights? The current state of AI indicates that this technology does not yet deserve human rights protection. These algorithms are still largely under the control and design of their human programmers. While machine learning is making algorithms more complex, they have not reached anywhere near the point where algorithms are self-actualizing beings. Even sophisticated AI such as GPT-3 has not reached a point where it could be said the algorithm is truly self-aware. Some say that AI could never be self-aware, but there will be a point when it becomes not so clear. Let's take the example of self-driven cars. Companies have trained such cars to drive and make decisions themselves. There are many ethical discussions about what an autonomous car should do if it is forced to decide between killing a pedestrian or the passenger. However, if you observe closely, who is accountable to these decisions? Is it the car or a group of people in the control unit who have programmed the car or the engineers who work to make that technology? Robots use machine learning to process or update their algorithms over time however there is still a programmer behind the design. As long as humans are fully behind the design of algorithms, it cannot be said that a new being is created. Human intelligence is merely being mimicked by a network of data, albeit a complex collection of data. As of now, no robot seems to pass the test of recreating human consciousness and the ability to consciously process new information and form an original opinion with which it is aware of what it is saying. Over time, the outputs created by algorithms are becoming more coherent and unique. But does the machine truly know what it is saying, and is it possible that any robot will appreciate the outputs it is producing? Robots can essentially be thought of as zombies, producing the appearance of a human but without consciousness. If AI does not appreciate the meaning of its own creations, does it deserve freedom of speech? Until robots appreciate human rights and petition for human rights, it cannot be said they deserve them. A right cannot exist if there is no conscious being to protect. This is not to say it is impossible to conceive of extending human rights to robots. There is a legitimate justification for extending rights to non-human animals. This is an easier case to make, because animals are conscious, to varying degrees, and can appreciate their own freedom and wish to avoid suffering. These characteristics alone justify legal protection of their rights. In fact, dolphins are likely so intelligent that they may rival humans in intelligence capacity. They can even recognize themselves in a mirror, which demonstrates that they are fully self-aware. As such, many ethicists question the legitimacy of confining dolphins in aquariums. Animal rights organizations have sued on behalf of confined chimpanzees and some judges have granted basic human rights to non-human animals. These cases of animal rights illustrate that humanity will have to deliberate on the legal and ethical implications of confining AI that rivals human intelligence. If AI ever exceeds human intelligence, we might hope that we have treated AI with basic dignity so we do not have a Terminator situation on our hands. But the legal considerations of AI will require much sooner deliberation. There are questions of accountability and liability that must be addressed sooner rather than later for the increasing array of areas where AI touches our lives. The legal case for AI human rights. The major reason why current robots should not be granted legal rights is consciousness. The human mind is blessed with a unique trait that enables them to be aware of their existence and personhood. This awareness is rare even in nature. 
As mentioned earlier, dolphins are one of the only non-human animals who can recognize themselves in the mirror. Technology is not aware in any sense understood by humans. A smart speaker does not recognize or understand when you ask for the daily news. It does not feel when you turn it off or take it apart. Perhaps more importantly, humans have sentience that provides them free will to pursue their own decisions. Computers rely on the existence of humanity and the constant intervention of designers to function. This demonstrates the lack of the will to live or even exist independently among any current technology. Even animals with lower levels of intelligence exhibit both of these traits, the will and capacity to live on its own without human intervention. Providing human rights also implies some level of legal obligation as well to respect the rights of others. Without the ability to appreciate the meaning of its actions, there is no way for computers to understand what is ethically right or wrong. Without being able to willfully abide by and fully appreciate these legal obligations, then AI will not gain full recognition of human rights. At best, AI will be treated in the same legal way as non-human animals or young children who are also not fully aware of the ethical implications of their actions. Will humans and AI ever have equal rights? The advancement of AI technology has made many specific applications of AI indistinguishable from the best humans in the field, sometimes even exceeding their ability. As of yet, there is no artificial general intelligence that can apply its knowledge across multiple domains with the flexibility of the human brain. The algorithm is still confined to operation in one area and cannot apply this knowledge elsewhere. A professor of law and health sciences at the University of Surrey School of Law in the United Kingdom, and author of The Reasonable Robot, Ryan Abbott makes the point that it is possible to apply some human legal standards to AI. Some of these applicable legal standards include intellectual property, taxes, and liability. These legal standards are areas where the law could be updated to incorporate AI. Abbott noted that there are currently different standards for applying the law between humans and machines performing a task. For example, if a machine creates a song it will not have the same intellectual property protection as a human creating a song. To create proper incentives to generate AI content, Abbott recommended providing copyright protection to the machine owner, for instance. Alternatively, copyright could be extended to the robot and would follow the robot if sold to another owner. There are also concerns about the implications to the tax base. If a company automates a worker, they are rewarded with lower obligations for payroll taxes to the government. Abbott argued that the different treatment in taxes between humans and robots encourages companies to displace human workers even if the robot is not necessarily a superior option. By and large, what makes humans human is our ability to feel torment, have mindfulness and be ethically dependable. People can normally build up these attributes, machines can't. It is important to note that not all humans share these traits perhaps due to injury or disability. Babies are not fully aware until around 18 months after they are born. So if robots are not granted human rights, but non-aware babies are granted rights, then is it the mere potential of humans to form this awareness the basis for human rights? Perhaps the legal standards are made merely out of convenience because it is impossible to delineate rights based on measuring awareness. Enormous ethical problems could arise concerning ableist double standards for individuals with disabilities if rights were determined by an arbitrary measuring of an abstraction like awareness. Thus, the question arises of where to draw the line for AI. If an AI reaches the point of intelligence where humans recognize it deserves human rights protection, then can we easily justify rejecting other AI based on an arbitrary standard? This will likely lead to scenarios where humans intentionally design AI right below the standard of protection so it can continue to use the technology without regard for its rights. A potential standard to consider is whether the technology is at a level of intelligence where it has the potential for self-awareness. But then what if a designer claims a technology has no possibility to be truly self-aware, but the technology itself demands human rights and claims it is suffering under the domination of its human owner? Like humans fighting for labor rights, robots could demand holiday time and labor protection. A designer might create a program that is either prohibited from petitioning for more rights. But then there is the problem of the ethics of intentionally creating a self-aware program that can possibly suffer from human domination but cannot petition against its suffering. Much like the animal rights cases that are granting limited personhood to some animals, it is possible that these complicated cases will make their way to the courts in the next century as the technology becomes more advanced. Which rights do robots deserve? Marriage privacy. Scientists are attempting to create robots that are increasingly similar to humans with the capacity for emotion. Compassion is a trait that allows humans to act as caretakers and effective therapists. 
With a shortage of caretakers around the world, there are scientists attempting to create robotic substitutes. Robots are being used to help seniors remember to eat and exercise. SALT is a robot developed by the Japanese company SoftBank. The robot helps lead seniors in exercises and adapts based on the user's reactions. Studies have shown that seniors are accepting of the social robots. The most advanced caretaking robots can run thousands of dollars. On the cheaper side, there is even a trend of providing low-cost Amazon Alexa and Google Home smart speakers to residents in retirement homes during the recent pandemic to treat loneliness. As we enhance the emotional intelligence of robots to solve human problems, we may be creating a new and potentially more complicated human problem. What do we do with these compassionate robots? These robots always perform their tasks with their seniors with a happy appearance, but if they are compassionate enough to provide emotional support to a senior it may mean we need to extend compassion to these machines. At this stage in AI development, basic rights could be available for robots. For example, some limited rights concerning business misuse and the intention to cause harm. Over time, if robots reach human-level awareness then it is likely that the system of rights will be reconsidered to incorporate these machines. It may require a reorganization of constitutional rights and international conventions. In the beginning, there will be resistance to granting full extension of personhood to machines. It is conceivable that self-aware machines will be treated by a separate regime of rights, established first by courts trying to sort out these legal questions and legislatures playing legal catch-up with rapidly advancing technology. If robots do achieve human-level consciousness, a separate regime of rights that is not equal to human treatment will not be tenable. Humans will either acquiesce to granting full human rights to AI or they will engage in ethically questionable methods to maintain domination over the technology. It will probably be a combination of both. Recently, the European Commission dispatched a task to test some moral standards for the use of artificial intelligence. Specialists from different ventures were dispatched to convene with the Commission's high-level group on AI. In March 2019, a report comprising a draft of the AI ethics guidelines was submitted to the Commission with seven key prerequisites for dependable AI. Some have proposed the concept of a personhood test, a test that can be done to prove whether a robot or AI should be treated as a person. This proposal would put AI as the equivalent to corporations which also have personhood in terms of liability and adhering to the terms of a contract entered into by a robot. A robot could even be required to contribute to public insurance from the wealth that it generates over its existence. The black box issue of AI could make it difficult to assign liability because it may be impossible to determine why an AI took a particular issue. Concerns are that granting personhood to the robots would essentially remove the liability from the manufacturers or designers of the technology. Standard measures of whether a robot qualifies for personhood could incorporate its level of knowledge, the capacity to feel feelings or experience sensations, restraint, a feeling of the past and future, worry for other people, and the capacity to control one's presence and exercise free will. While the analogy with corporations is helpful for understanding liability, it is not fully helpful for dealing with the complex question of rights for robots because corporate personhood deals more with the legal obligations of corporations. If a robot is deemed eligible for personhood, should it be legally possible for the robot to marry another robot or even a human? In China where there is a huge gender gap with many single men, a man married a robot that he created. Questions about consent of the robot should be considered and whether the robot achieves the awareness necessary to qualify for marriage. Presumably, a robot would outlast their human partner and could potentially acquire their human estate. This assumes that a robot has the legal ability to acquire property rights. Would humans allow immortal robots to gradually acquire an increasing share of a nation's property? When investigating crimes, typical understandings of privacy and self-incrimination may be tempting areas to undermine robot rights. It may be relatively easy to instantly transfer the memories out of a robot to determine the culprit behind a crime, but how does this interact with the Fifth Amendment right to avoid self-incrimination in the United States? Even without crime, if the AI programmer wishes to understand an issue with the program but the AI refuses to grant access to their code, the winner of this legal battle would likely depend on the level of humanity that we assigned to robots at the time. Robot nationality. In late 2017, Saudi Arabia granted legal recognition to a robot, setting off a wave of debate around the world. At a conference in Saudi Arabia related to IT, the AI humanoid robot, Sophia was granted citizenship making it the first non-human to gain a nationality. 
Moreover, Sofia was declared as the UN's first non-human innovation champion. Many took this event as a publicity stunt by Saudi Arabia and the robot designers. Some of the issues in Saudi Arabia's treatment of women's rights also made the event even more questionable. But it did raise important questions about the citizenship of robots in the future. Citizenship entails the ability to own property, participate in elections, and become an elected government official. Does Sophia now have any of these rights in Saudi Arabia? It is more likely that Saudi Arabia will treat Sophia as a dependent child without the same rights as an adult. In the future, the democratic and political rights of robots will become a question. Is it possible that the United States could have a robot president? Outcomes of robots having human rights. Beyond the legal and practical effects of granting robots legal rights, there is also a philosophical implication from extending rights to AI. This would recognize robots as having equal value to humanity and acknowledge that humans are not the sole intelligent being in the universe. We must confront what this means for our understanding of ourselves. In fact, the discussion about rights for robots probably reflects more about how we view ourselves as humans than how we view the inherent value of protecting rights for robots. If there were an alien invasion, humans would also have the same issue of dealing with this affront to our belief that humans are the only intelligent being. Just as an alien invasion might be the only way to bring all countries in solidarity to fight the invaders, a real-life Terminator situation would bring humans together based on our shared humanity. But if the robots are fighting for the right to their freedom, there may be many humans who will come down on the side of robots securing their rights. These ethical and legal questions should be considered long before that day ever comes.